A year and a half ago, I made a video where I attempted to research every technology in CK3 as fast as possible. We ended up doing a pretty decent job filling out the tech tree by the year 1270. That being said, a lot has changed in the last two years. Not only have we received multiple DLCs that have a huge effect on the two metrics needed to increase your research speed, but I'd like to think I've gotten a little bit better at the game as well. So today I am trying my hand at a research speedrun once more. The main problem we had last time had nothing to do with our territory's development or our character's learning skill. We had plenty of those. It was actually the hard cap Paradox put in place on the game's technological eras that slowed us down the most. Now bear with me here. To go into a new era, you have to have two things. First, you have to have research above 50% of the previous era's technologies. And second, you had to have passed a certain date in the game. Why should I have to wait? If my people are smart enough to figure out cranes in the year 1000 AD, then who are you to stop them? Luckily for us, some lovely gentlemen created a mod that removes that pesky era date requirement from the game. Meaning now we'll be able to really find out just how fast you can research every single technology in Crusader Kings 3. Okay, so here we are in the game, and the whole reason I wanted to play as this duchy in the southern tip of India is because of this county right here. It already has 25 development right from the start of the game, as well as four empty slots where we can build right away these city holdings. And these city holdings are going to be insanely useful for us because they have these guilds line of buildings which can only be made in cities and what these do is increase the development growth uh, if we have a total of five city holdings in this one county all with guilds and all of the cities that are on the coast here with trade ports, we can stack insane amounts of development in this one county and the reason we want to have a lot of high development is because the research speed the whole point of this game to research as many things as possible as fast as possible is dependent on the average development of all the counties with your culture. Right away, the first, the very first thing we have to do is fabricate a claim on somebody who has this Bengali culture. The reason being, if we look at the Bengali culture, they have agrarian. And I want agrarian from them because that will increase our average development growth in our capital by 30% because it is a farmland's terrain. This county here also has a Bengali culture. But the only problem is in my uh, my practice games, it always gets absorbed by this kingdom. So does this duchy here, but it happens a little bit after. So hopefully in two years, we can get this claim off, declare war for this county, and then we can start um, promoting cultural acceptance with the Bengali people because we have to get this value up to 40% in order to make a hybrid culture with them. The way you can increase your cultural acceptance is by um, having vassals of their culture, by having a piece of territory with their culture and then putting your steward on promote cultural acceptance once I have this piece of land. Other things that we're gonna be doing, um, I'm gonna go down a uh, learning lifestyle in order to get our uh, learning up a little bit because that will help our research speed as we said. I'm also gonna look for a wife based on inheritable traits um, because if I can get an heir who has some of these intelligent traits, then that will really help with their uh, with how much lifestyle experience they get from any tree, not only learning. And then finally, another reason that's really nice for having these uh, farmlands trains is you can build these mansions, uh, the manor house buildings, which we already have constructed in the capital, and they make you 0.7 tax per month, the highest of any building in the game. But you can also make these farms and fields. So since I have a little bit of gold saved up, I'm going to start constructing that as well and our gold income is already almost at six gold per month Money. right off the beginning of the game. Okay, so I, I um, ended up moving our fabricate claim over here because they actually absorbed this duchy that I was trying to do it on. So hopefully we can get this to pass before they get absorbed by either of these big kingdoms. I actually didn't go for the county with the Bengali culture. Instead, I went for this county 
because not only do they also have a grain, but they have city keepers, which it just makes city, it has some buffs for city uh, holdings and their buildings. So I think it's worth it to go for them instead of the Bengali. And now I can actually declare a war on them for that county. They don't have any allies and they only have like 800 troops. So it shouldn't be too, too difficult in order for us to, uh, to take this land away from them. A few moments later. <laughs> Okay, there you go, 100% um, after capturing their capital, and we already have this nice county up here, which again, the only reason we got it is because I want to go over here to our steward and start increasing, uh, promoting cultural acceptance with these guys, because you can see we're going to be going up. Um, this is yearly gain, but I'm pretty sure it's monthly, 0.41% per month. But I think we can actually increase this if we were to grant this to a local of the culture here. And now if we look at the same thing, uh, it did go up a little bit because we have this uh, bonus from vassalization. And I'm also going down a learning tree in order to pick up open minded, with, which will actually increase it by another 20%. Uh, we can get started working on my next task, which will be to island hop all my way to Spain. Hey, what the fuck? I know it sounds crazy, um, it's gonna, it's not gonna be easy, it's gonna be hard, but what I want to do is go into Spain because if we were to play, if we were to move our capital into Spain, it would actually put us into the, uh, the Iberian struggle, and then if we have access to the Iberian struggle, we have access to a new dynastic legacy that is actually super overpowered if you plan on having a lot of cities, so it, it is absolutely necessary for me to get into Spain. The only problem is, you can see if we right click to declare war on any of these small counties, we are too far away to interact with them. And actually our diplomatic range is pretty limited, so we're going to have to do a bunch of little wars uh, against small counties in order to get close enough to Spain so we can finally launch a war against one of their counties. And the first little war that we're going to have to do is on the Maldives, so we just have to get out of debt here and now we can declare war on them. And they're going to get a bonus of, um, well, I guess I should wait till we're not recently disembarked, but they're going to get a bonus because we're going to attack them between a straight, but still we have a lot more men than them, so we should still win the battle. <laughs> there you go, go to 100%. And we have taken the Maldives for ourselves. Okay, so we have our new claim just finished. It's going to put us in a little bit of debt, but what I wanted to show you guys is we just advanced to the next cultural era, 10 years after the game start. And we can already start researching early medieval text because there is no more tech date with the mod that I have installed. Gotcha, bitch. I'm not sure where um, their army is. Oh, there it is. Hello there. And there you go, 100%. This county here, we don't really need to hold on our own, so I'm just going to grant it away to somebody actually of this culture that we're trying to improve our opinion with because I think that'll help get this acceptance value up just a little bit. Yeah, you can see vassalage is now 0 0.15 where it was 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.07 before. And slowly but surely, we're going to make our way towards Spain. So I think uh, one thing I'm going to do next is actually convert religions to this Jain faith because they have the equal uh, doctrine, which means that both men and women can work as our on our council as well as inherit my land. Inheriting my land I don't really care about, but if I were, were able to get women to work as my council members, you can see here if I go to my nephew and try to set up a marriage for him and sort by stewardship ability, we could actually marry him off to this, this lady who has 23 stewardship of her own. So I'm going to convert this faith. Pretty much everybody's going to convert with me and it only costs 300 piety. This is a naked religion, so I'm gonna have to go into uh, I'm gonna have to go into my settings here and make sure we don't see any nudity, or else that's gonna I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing in order to fix that. Um, at least, like we said, we can switch our steward over here for this lady who has 23 ability, and that's gonna get us a lot more cultural acceptance with these guys. You can see it brings us up to 0.71 uh, percent per month. We're actually almost at the 40 already. And then uh, having a good steward is also helpful because we can then increase our development in our capital afterwards. Okay, there you go. You can see we just hit 40%, so we can make a hybrid culture now. 
So we're going to go ahead and do this. I'll keep communal as the ethos because it gives us a discount in our buildings, uh, costs and construction time. And then for our traditions, we have six selected right now, but I'm actually going to take off one just because I want to, I want room to have an empty slot so I can reform this culture down the line. We're going to get two technologies from this also, which is, you know, decent. Nice, nice. And if we look at the culture map, you can see we now have a one county culture, which is our hybrid one that we just made. And it's only in the capital, which is perfect because now if I look at our research speed, let's say I'm going for manorialism, you can see instead of gaining just 0.3, which is what we were getting before, we're now getting 0.5 <laughs> in terms of our average development per month. So we can take our uh, steward off of promote cultural acceptance, instead put her on increased development in county, and now we are set up very nicely just to start stacking development in our capital and we will start gaining ridiculously fast research speed from it. Already to research this technology, which is uh, from the new era, it's only going to take 13 years. I've um, done a couple more island hops over here and now I'm declaring war on this duchy. And it shouldn't be too hard. They're pretty weak as well. So I think I can beat them in their own capital. And then take their capital. And that should bring me to 100%. Now that we are close enough to Spain, you can see we can do some wars on them. Unfortunately, uh, all the little counties have disappeared other than this one here. But I think I can declare war on uh, Majorca. And these guys should still count as part of the Iberian struggle. So we're going to declare war. Um, you can see they are very weak. So there you go, 100% enforce our demands gets us this county, which is part of the Iberian struggle. So if we do the simple thing of moving our realm capital here, hey, that's pretty good. You can see we are now part of the Iberian struggle. And the only reason I wanted to do this is if I go to open our dynastic legacies, which you can see I was saving our renowned to do this, we have the metropolitan line of dynastic legacies. And these are all really good. But I think the most important is the first one, which is the influential cities um, legacy. And this, as you can see, means that every city will increase the monthly development growth of its county by 20%. So Excellent. I can immediately move my capital right back over here and even get rid of this land over here. Like I don't need this, um, this title. Make sure to give it to somebody who's not part of our culture, our new culture that is. So now that we have the Metropolitan Dynastic Legacy, we're already getting a pretty decent amount of percentage bonuses to our development. That's why I switched off of learning um, after I got this profit perk in order to go down stewardship because if I can get centralization that's going to give us another 0.3 per month but it, you have to remember it's not only 0.3 that we're going to be gaining it's 0.3 times all of these percentages so that would actually be something in the range of uh it looks like 125 percent so it's incredibly valuable every little piece of development we can get here and uh, like I just mentioned, I did pick up the profit perk in the theologian tree of the learning lifestyle because it makes it cheaper to reform our religion. And that's what I want to do with this faith that we just converted to. I want to be able to reform it in order to do a couple things. First of all, I want to switch over to lay clergy uh, in order to hold our temple that's in the capital county. I also want to put a spiritual head of faith because I think that lets us ask our head of faith for gold using our piety. And I think honestly, that's it. I'll leave it on equal so we can have really good council members. And then these tenants, I don't really care about, but it is a little bit too expensive to try to switch for something else. And my character is going to die soon. And I still need to get around 300 more piety before I can actually uh, reform this religion. Okay, I think I have enough money to go ahead and start constructing our first city here. I'm going to do it on this space right here where it can get both a trade ports and a guild because it's on the coast spiritual head of faith lay clergy those are the only things we need let's do it there you go we have our new faith now and this lets us hold this temple personally which is going to be pretty important because they unfortunately didn't build a uh, trade ports building here so i'm going to start constructing that right away 
in order to get us that extra little bit of development growth. So what I'm going to do with my counties now is really important. I'm going to grant away all seven of these holdings that we don't that aren't in our capital, because let's say right now, if I look at our succession, you can see our heir would get our capital and this county, uh, our capital, as well as the temple here. But a lot of my kids and I did have a lot of kids would get more land. And the problem with that is that they are part of my new culture. So they would want to start converting this land to their culture, which would in turn lower the average development of our culture, because again, some of these places don't have the highest development. But later in the game, we want this to be at like 50 by the time this is going to be at like 24 or 25. So we can't have these switching to our culture. We need them to remain our old culture here. I'm going to go ahead and grant them to people who are of that culture. People like this lady here. It doesn't really matter exactly to who I grant it to, just as long as um, my kids won't inherit it from me. Okay, so our city just finished. Our first city that we have made. So now if we look at our development, you should see a second village center giving us 20%. Well, giving us 25% in total. I don't need any of these counties here anymore. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and grant them all away to people. Or grant the independence to all my vassals who I gave these to. We got what we came for. We have, we have the Metropolitan Dynastic Legacy Tree available to us. So we don't need any of this land. We did so much work with that guy. I am really happy with everything we were able to accomplish. We're pretty much set up to dominate this game right now in terms of our development, um, barring any invasions from this giant kingdom, which I just noticed is to our north. Um, so we just got war declared on us by our neighbors here. It says they have a few allies, but doesn't seem like they're in the war right now. And I think, honestly, I should probably just run in here and start taking their capital. Psych! Okay. And there you go. We have won that war. I'm going to make our son our court physician because that'll get him a little bit more learning if he picks up some, physi some physician traits. He already, though, has 21 learning and 14 stewardship, which is amazing. We got him astute intellectual and he has a genius trait. He should be another amazing character for us to play as. So I just made it uh, enough money to make another city and I'm going to do it on the coast again so we can get both the guilds and the trade ports in there, which should boost our development even further in the capital. We already brought it up to 29 right now. If we take a look at the rest of the world, Constantinople is 29, Rome is 27, and Cordoba is 23. So we are tied for the most developed land in the world already. And we should definitely be um, pushing further and further ahead of those guys. And we still have two more cities to build. All right, so we just finished all the cities here. But if we have a look at my development, I'm making 7.8 right now, which is so nuts. Our steward is really good, and she's getting a 6.75. We're losing five for uh, the penalty of having 36 development already. So that's 1.75 plus 0 0.3 makes it two around. So we're turning two development, 2.1 development. We're turning that into 7.8 through all of these percent bonuses. We did pick up large cattle herd, which is like a pop-up event. But all these other things here are either from my technology or from my cities themselves. Uh, we also have been going through and upgrading these cities. Actually, some of the counts in these cities were actually upgrading them on their own, which is pretty nice of them. I don't think we're going to be able to get enough prestige with this character to get 5k and pick up uh, the new tradition on our culture. But I think that's a okay. We are still we are still just pumping tons of development. Look at this already up to 38 now. All right, so we just died. And so we're playing as our son, who's 46 already, you know, that's kind of old. Like, I really need to start picking up prestige on some of these characters. Maybe I can do it as this heir, actually, because I'm still not sure I'll be able to pick up 5k prestige with this character. My brother did get control of this territory up here, which is bad because he's part of our culture, remember? So we're not going to want him to hold that territory personally because he could convert the culture in it. So I'm going to go ahead and revoke it from him. He has a 100% chance that he'll accept this, but I would also do this even if it would start a war. 
So actually I was looking at this big kingdom here, which is where the, uh, which somehow took over this land to our left. Okay. They don't have any alliances and they have a four year old in charge. So even though they have 3k men, that's definitely not, that's definitely not too strong where we wouldn't be able to invade them. So I'm going to have to reset my perks here because I'm going to want to, I want to pick up sanctioned loopholes because what this lets me do is buy claims on uh, duchies and things like that. So we have this duchy over here, which is held by this person. We can buy this claim for 500 piety. We have a lot of piety, so that is a good move for us. And now if I right click on this person, I can declare war on them for my claim. We can't do a holy war against them because our, our faiths are too similar, but this way we can do um, this type of war. And since we're already right near here, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem taking this from them. Let's go. And then we can just keep taking their land, getting this war score in our favor. Okay, we tick to 100%. I might as well hold these because we do have room for it and it'll give us a little bit more money in the short term. And you know, money is good for buying more um guilds and trade ports and all that good stuff i'm actually throwing right now it's supposed to be a speed run and how could i not immediately build the duchy building the second i had picked up um manorialism that is a big mistake because i have been missing out on another 10 percent development growth in the capital with uh with the royal reserves building so i'm going to build that right away i don't think there's anything else that really would help us more than this i only noticed because we have this uh, leisure palace building in this duchy that we just took from this guy and um this is like really not doing anything amazing for me but it actually is helping the control in this area because these two regions that we just warred for do have low control okay so the sun i want to play as next just turned 16 and this is important because first of all we can make him our chancellor he doesn't have a very high skill but you know that's okay because he's gonna gain um, a little bit, a little bit of prestige from having this position. And the other thing we can do with him is sort for marriages by prestige gain. We can now set him up with marriages like this, and you can see he's gonna gain seven hundred prestige from this. So we're gonna set up a marriage. Excellent. And now we're just gonna go ahead and murder this character. Uh, we should have enough gold to be able to invite a bunch of people to these uh, schemes. That way we don't have to worry about them not being successful. And then once we murder this character, we can do the exact same thing, murder her again, and hopefully we'll get him pretty close to 5k, so that when we play as him, we can finally reform our culture. So I also just finished Mangonels, which means, which means that we are going to start to move into the high medieval era. Normally you'd have to wait till the year 1050 AD to be able to do this, but you can see it's only 941 and it should be done in just three years because how high our average development is. Okay, here goes my scheme to murder my son's wife, and she did die. So now we have a new slot. We can do the same exact thing. Prestige gain. Marry him off. I think the person has to be 16 years old. That's the only thing. But he's going to get another 700 prestige from this one, bringing him all the way up to 1.6k prestige. And then we can just go right ahead and run a murder on her as well. Oh, and there you go. We have just went into the high medieval era. Um, so I think in the high medieval, the first thing I'm going to go for is windmills because that'll let me upgrade all my cities to tier three and all the buildings in them to the to tier six, I'm pretty sure. Oh, or maybe actually I might go for um, urbanization first and then I'll go for windmills after just because this will raise our existing uh, development penalty up to 55 because we are getting close to uh, getting close to that. But if you saw, um, when we take a look at this urbanization technology, it's at 0%, right? Zero progress. It's a new era and it only takes seven years for us to research this. How crazy is that? <laughs> okay. So I just killed my, um, son's newest wife and he's all the way at 3.5 K. Oh, I didn't realize I was going to stress him out by doing this. I think it's about time we try to find him a normal wife. We'll let him live peacefully for now and stop killing his uh, his wives. I also just earned um, 800 gold and I didn't even realize this, but we have a wonder which we can make over here. Uh, the only thing is it only raises the, uh, the tax from the holdings in this area. And I think I'd rather make 
this grand temple that we have in our uh, northern county that we've been holding all the game because this actually gets us two tax per month so i'm going to build that instead it should be done pretty quick just two years okay and as you can see the grand temple finished in the northern county here giving us above well just exactly 40 gold per month now Brilliant. and i am really pumping through these buildings now uh, as you can see and they're being finished really quick also so we should be squeezing every point of development out of our county we are making 4.1 at this point in time because i did pick up centralization just before this kind of falling apart they don't have any more allies so i'm gonna buy the duchy away from them and then declare war for it and then this way we should once we finish this war have everything we need in order to to create the kingdom okay so i won the war gonna enforce our demands here so now that we took that piece of land we can create the kingdom although i don't have enough gold to do that we'll have to wait a couple months first so there you go we now have 500 gold there you go so now we have our royal court we can hang our banners and everything which will get us a little bit more prestige and uh, renowned oh okay so i just got infirm and this is huge because I want to die. Uh, I'm seven years old. I'm ready to go. I need to play as my son so I can finally reform our, my uh, my culture and then pick up a tradition that's going to help us gain uh, development even faster. <laughs> okay, so um, I sent this guy on a on a expedition to Eastern Africa, and it looks like he brought me back the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah, I guess we'll just go put this in the uh, in the corner of our courtroom. It looks perfect there. And I've kind of been delaying upgrading my buildings because I think I'm actually going to go for industrialist on for the uh, cultural tradition. Um, the only benefit of getting gardeners, court gardeners, is it could give me somebody who would make 0.7 is the max development per month I could get from that character. So then I'd have to do 0.7 multiplied by all these bonuses. So this is 0.7. Um, 6 plus 0 0.3 0 0.9 so we're turning 0 0.9 into 4.6 which means if I get the trusty calculator out which should mean I'm making a 511 percent bonus um, from all these percentages so let's say if instead I was making a, a 0 0.7 from the gardeners times 6.11 Beep, boop, boop, bop, boop, boop, beep. That would be another 4.28 development growth, monthly development growth on here. So now if we do 4.28 times 12, beep, boop, 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 bop. that would be 51 development per year. On the other hand, if we go look at our culture and we pick up industrious, you can see you gain 25 development growth when a building is completed once a year. But this applies on each holding. So the fact is, we have seven holdings in this one county. So if I make one building per holding per year, that would be a total of 1.75 development growth per year. Sorry, 175 development growth per year. It goes up 1.75 development per year. Just comparing those two, you can see it's way more valuable to get industrialists than it is to get garden architects for me right now, even when I am stacking all of these nice benefits. So I think that pretty much makes a decision for us. So we lost a lot of our land, as you can see. We've got a claimant faction here, which is a bit annoying. So I'm gonna have to reset my perks here. It will stress my character out quite a bit, but that's okay. We need to pick up all of these nice stewardship perks. Um, although the only one I really care about is centralization, to be honest. And then right after we've done this, we can switch over to learning in order to get the nice ones from the scholar tree because that's going to really impact our uh, research speed. So this faction that's rising up against me, this guy is the strongest. He has like 4k men and I can set up an alliance with him if I marry him off to my um, daughter and heir. So we're going to do that and it should kick him out of that faction at least. They're still decently strong. But I think now um, I'll be able to take them. I also set up an alliance with this big old kingdom over here. So we can call them into the war once that starts as well. All right. So here comes the faction. So you have 7.8k, which is pretty, you know, it's pretty, 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 pretty sizable. 
and we should be able to capture land pretty quick at least because we do have 60 siege weapons um, and they are the upgraded ones the mangonels okay so we hit 100 percent in this war with my vassals so we should be able to nicely revoke the land from my daughter or uh, my sister i guess now we should have everything ready to go we're making our gold again we are just one domain above our limit there you go so let's reform the culture we're gonna pick up industrious because like i explained before it's just way more valuable than garden architects in this situation having both would definitely be the best of both worlds but i think honestly we could unlock every single technology before we're able to reform our culture again because i think you have to wait 50 years after the first time you do it it's gonna take five years for industrious to finish but once that's done i can then go around and spend all of my money on just starting to upgrade these buildings because every time i upgrade a building it will then get me more um prestige i also went through and i am upgrading pretty much all my cities to tier three because that'll let me go all the way to tier six for all these economic buildings and we are very close to unlocking industrious okay so we're really shooting up development right now we are all the way up to 59 we have a bunch of bunch of buildings being finished left right and center which makes the development go up even more the only thing is i have to remember which holdings i do a building upgrade in because if i do the same one in if i upgrade two buildings from the same holding in the same year i don't get the plus 25 from it you can see some very nice jumps here every time i finish one of the buildings as well as the 7.3 we're getting now from increasing the development with our steward we have upgraded every development building to its max in all five of these cities right now we take a look at look at our development we're going up by 8.2 per month and look at these bonuses yes, it is yes, actually yes. crazy so we're only missing one tech to go into the late medieval era we only have seven months left until we pick up uh, castle baileys so then it'll take like a few years probably a couple years for this to pass and then we'll be able to start filling out the last era of technologies in the game okay uh we just died we went down stewardship and we actually went down to pick up centralization which is perfect because now i can go right away into scholarship focus and start picking up the scholar perks for our character we don't have to waste time getting those stewardship ones we don't really care about stewardship anymore other than getting centralization for the development growth in the capital of course and then our nephew somehow got this here could we revoke it oh he will actually accept the revoke what a lovely character and right away we're back to 10 holdings just like what we had before and we didn't even have to do any wars for it so we're still making 7.1 monthly development growth but look at this our character has the diligent perk which is huge for us because we can um actually develop the capital which is going to get us another 0.2 development per month but if we look at the development it was at 7.1 before and now it's all the way up to 8.5 per month so i think it's worth it and we can just go about and continue to upgrade all of our uh, buildings so i haven't looked at the development map in a while but i have a feeling i already know what it's going to look like the most developed land in the game turns to this yellow color and then everything else gets scaled down so like this one is a slightly yellow but it's at 49 and i have a feeling that the highest developed counties in the game at this stage are only going to be around like 30 upper 30s maybe 40 so the rest of the world is going to be looking very very purple in compared to our insanely developed capital and i was right Probably the most developed land in the game always is uh, Constantinople and you can see it's only at 40 while we are at 75 development. Alright guys we made it into the late medieval era 200 years before the date that you're supposed to do it. I don't even know what we should research first here. Bombards would kind of be like the biggest flex like I just come at these other cultures who are only now just entering high medieval and these guys are benefiting benefiting from my high development overflow so like these other places you can see they're only in early medieval oh my goodness guys look at this there's not a single other culture in the game 
that's even close to high medieval. Look at these places, they're all at like 3 of 17 for early medieval, other than Tamil, who are in high medieval only for the fact that they are sharing a bunch of development overflow, a bunch of development overflow from my crazy capital. That is so nuts to me. We are literally two technological eras above the rest of the world. So I think like I did before, I'm going to go for Renaissance Thought, which is the um, technology that raises your existing development penalty. It raises it to 90 actually, so maybe we'll make use of this before we hit 90. And then I'll go for Cranes because it lets us upgrade all the cities and that'll just let us stack development even further. And then after that, I'll probably go for some military ones so we can do maybe like a cheeky invasion on some other areas to finish the video off. Okay, we just discovered cranes, like I said. I'm actually gonna go for primogenitor first, so we don't have to deal with succession anymore. Um, that'll take just four years to research because we're going up so quick right now. And then after that, I'll do some military stuff. For now, we have 4K saved in the bank and we can use that 4K to upgrade every single city in our capital county and even the temple as well. Why the heck not? So remember, we are currently making 9.0 and once I make all these cities and upgrade the guilds and trade ports all to tier 8, we'll come back and see just how much development we're making after that. The other good thing about upgrading all these uh, these wonderful city buildings is that is that every time we finish a building, we pop a huge amount of development into the capital as well. Tier 8 guilds building finishes in this city. If you take a look through, we can have, you can see we have tier eight for all the development buildings in the county. And now if we look at the development in the capital, it goes all the way up to 10.8 per month. How do you like that? We are also almost making a um, hundred gold per month now from having all of these really juicy counties. I honestly haven't really been paying too much attention to these other counties here like i guess i'll upgrade some buildings like if i see they can be upgraded but i'm really only focusing on the capital here and uh i think it's paying off also i have primogenitor unlocked so i'm gonna enforce this this makes it so that my eldest son or daughter will inherit all my titles on death so i don't have to worry about anything splitting we'll get all 11 of these titles with my son when we play as him and like at this point honestly guys we've pretty much won the game like, we're, if I want to get a new late medieval technology, it only takes us three years to do because our average development is so dang high. All right, we just discovered Bombards. I'm going to go replace all of our mangonels with them. Get the best siege unit in the game. Might as well get eight of them. We have the money for it. And would you look at this? We're at 99 development. In one month, we'll go to 100. There you go. And we have maxed out the development in our capital we just hit 100 technically this is the fastest research you could possibly have in ck3 and we've managed to do it in 145 years we have 100 development in the capital plus we have a hundred percent chance to gain this progress all right so since we're gonna unlock every single technology pretty soon i think i'm gonna have to pick a target to go to war with either egypt who's pretty decent they just stepped into high medieval and uh, the Greeks aren't even in high medieval. So yeah, I think I will go for a war against Egypt. They're like the strongest nation I can find here. Like the, there's a bunch of people with around 15k. Yeah, not too many stronger than that it would seem. There is this big Persian empire actually, which is uh, doing pretty well for itself. So I'm gonna have to island hop again <laughs> in order to get to Egypt. I might have, it might have been a good idea honestly to... Uh, to keep some of those territories I took so I wouldn't have to do this, but you know, I'll do a couple of quick wars just so I'm in diplomatic range of Egypt and then maybe I'll buy a claim uh, on their whole kingdom and declare war for them. All right guys, so I went ahead, I bought the claim on the uh, the Egyptians. They look like they're the strongest. You can see they actually have 23,000 men. Wait, what? Oh, they activated their holy order for an extra 5k. So they have 23,000 men. I have the, the war for their duchy just started. Here come all my men sailing in. Why are you running? Why are you running? Oh, look at this actually. For some reason they're going the wrong way. I can now take my army with bombards, move them into the capital, and look at this. 130 bombards 
8.8 siege progress per day. This is their capital is not going to stand a chance. Their level two castle doesn't matter if you have keeps or anything. We're just going to invade the absolute crap out of you. And now we can just continue to seize their land. Oh my goodness. I was looking for their, I was looking for their army and I was wondering why it's their army was decreasing in size. Like they were at 25 K when we started this war, but they're already only at 16 K and they're trying to take my tiny piece of land over here and they're losing a ton of men from attrition while doing it hey pal you just blowing from stupid town meanwhile i'm just standing here with all the supply limit i could want my units are fully supplied here they are finally coming to attack us um i'm gonna jump in here they're gonna get the oh no chance they're gonna get the um recently disembarked penalty too these guys suck i thought this would at least be a close battle but they're look they're losing 25 for having a starving army 30 for coming off a boat recently my disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined this is just gonna be complete domination in this battle oh my goodness and we stack wiped 10k men. Let's go hop in here to save our other units as well. And we stack wipe them as well. So there you go. I thought it might have been a little bit closer, but you know, the CK3 AI, not the best. We'll enforce our demands here and we have taken the pyramids uh, for India. All right, that war was so disappointing. I think I'm going to buy a, um, a claim on the Byzantines next get their capital duchy as well. I bought some more men at arms even, so uh, we're going to be even stronger than we were before. I think we have 200 siege units at this point. Oh, okay, so we just died. And the only reason this could be a problem is because it might hurt our research speed because we're not going to be getting 100%, but it looks like we'll still be getting 80 because he did go down he did go down the scholar tree a little bit at least so that's gonna help and i don't even know where the byzantines are but they're not even fighting us and the byzantines have notoriously tall walls um if you didn't know they have this theodosian walls building that gives them a ton more perks as well as a huge garrison and uh you can see they have increased like hostile raid time and stuff like that so let's see just how long it takes us to tear these walls down Okay, not very difficult at all, may I say. And I think we should probably attack them here. And there you have it, 100% in that war as well. We have taken Constantinople now. Alright guys, up next is the Pope. We're going to do the same exact thing. By the claim to, not the Papacy, but we'll take the Duchy. And now we'll war this bastard. All right, so let's try to take his Stop capital it. here. He's gonna come and attack us. Boom, and look at that. We destroy him there in that battle. And then we can seize the capital very quickly. And we actually capture him and we get the Pope's hat. Oh, is that a crown? Oh my goodness, guys, look at us. <laughs> oh, it would look so funny. We're, uh, our religion is like the naked religion, but I turned nudity off, but like we're literally just naked wearing the Pope's hat at this point. Enforce our demands here. Disband the army. We'll give this to another one of our kids. And there you have it. We have now taken over the papacy as well. You can see we're only a few technologies away. Six months till we get this one here. Then we will have finished the challenge and researched every single tech in the game. There you go. Third to last technology done. We only have two left. This one's going to take 16 months and the other one should take only a couple. There you go, guys. One left. And how do you like that, guys? We have researched every single technology in the game by the year 1038 only 171 years since the start of the game taking a look we still only have our one county culture here where our capital is We're making 20 a measly 20 gold 
in the capital. I forgot to upgrade these buildings once I upgraded this to tier 4. But all my 5 cities are tier 4, maxed out in buildings. Same with my temple. I think I could have done it faster too, honestly. Um, there were a couple lights where I was waiting to where I was waiting to reform my culture. And it took me a little bit longer to get industrious than I would have liked. And we could have also went for um, Guardian Architects somehow a bit earlier too. So honestly, I think you could do it faster than 171 years. But I'll leave that challenge up to you guys. If you can research every technology in the game using the Tech Date Be Gone mod, you should send me a tweet and I'll, uh, I'll give you a little shout out in my next video. So we have the pyramids, we have Constantinople, and we have Rome. Pretty much like the most developed lands in the game. However, no lands in the game look very developed because it's everything is scaled to my beautiful 100 development capital. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. It was a ton of fun to make. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.